Hi everyone and welcome to episode 15 of the Witch Doctor's Guide to Service Now. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon or evening, I guess, for most of people in Europe. So today we have a community question that has been popping up from now and then. And that is how can you do so you want to send out an email or trigger notification and with that notification you actually want to have an attachment as well to be attached of course to that um, outgoing email so i have actually made two uh, ways of doing this one pre-madrid because in madrid we can have it little bit cooler a little bit less coding and one in London that requires just a tiny tiny two three lines of code to make it work and before we look into that and PowerPoint never seems to work there we go uh, my name is Goran Lundqvist aka the witch doctor or we live in Sweden you can call me Jalgan if you're outside don't bother to try I guess been working around with ServiceNow for a couple of years now, everything from technical assignments to architecture, best practices, yeah, health checks, mentoring, you name it. Been a customer, been also working as a consultant for a partner as well, and soon we'll actually move into ServiceNow themselves, which will be a new cool adventure, I guess. Love to be on the community, play around, help out. Three times there's now MVP and actually uh, wrote a book as well for about three weeks ago. It went uh, public. So if you haven't bought it, please buy it. Uh, hopefully you enjoy it as much as the other people who have already bought it and read it. If you want to hook up or talk, connect, just uh, hit me on LinkedIn. Easiest way, Twitter, and of course, subscribe to the channel as well. Enough about me, or at least just the book, of course. If you want to buy it, just hit Amazon, search for service now, and it should be there. Both available as a Kindle release, and of course the paperback as well. And let's skip that one. So, what are we going to look like? Use case. New employee, you have made uh, custom fields on the user table, which is the start date. And then we will have a, a scheduled job or a scheduled flow. That will trigger outgoing email and the tricky part is that there should be an attachment on that outgoing email as well. So we have two solutions, one in Madrid and one in London, mainly because pre-Madrid you don't have a copy attachment action out of the box. And I think in episode three, I actually made one for the London version. So I'm going actually to reuse that one in the London solution and then show you how you can actually use it in Madrid. And then in Madrid, you actually don't need to write a single line of code, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then of course, the pros and cons, uh, trying to do what we call a data driven process. So if we would like to change this attachment, we don't really want to go and rewrite the flow as well. And actually, <laughs> my action, I think, handles that a little bit better than the out-of-the-box one. So choose which one you would like to use and think of a better way of handling the out-of-the-box one than I did, I guess. Enough about talking. Let's go and hit some cooler stuff. Let's hit the instance. So this is my London instance. So what I have done, basically we need the attachment. And what I have done, I made a notification. And of course, you can put this attachment somewhere else that might fit you better. I just put it in the notification because since we are sending the email out from the flow, you won't find that specifications in the notification table. And I like to keep all the notifications in here. It's a lot easier to troubleshoot. And as you can see, I just written, put it on a table. You can, of course, put it some obscure table as well that won't never trigger. Put in a good description why you're doing this one. And in this case, I can do even like that. I have just put in some conditions that makes this notification will never trigger. As you can see, active is true and active is false. And that, of course, is never true on both. Uh, of course, put it somewhere else if you like. That doesn't really matter in this case. So we have that and we have this attachment that we would like to be sent out on in the email. Let's take a look at the user. 
and we have users and let's take I think it was Adela yeah I have put a start date this is a, a custom field just a normal date field I guess the the person that asked the question on the community have something similar it doesn't really matter in this case this is just how to find specific records so I just put in a date today's date but let's go to the flow where the magic happens so flow designer and before that i forgot to mention it let me just find we have actions and since this is london i have my own copy attachment and what i actually did i fetched that from my github which you can do as well so just to show you, you go to the github slash goralanquist slash youtube and in episode 3 I had create custom actions to copy blah 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 and here you have the small code, not so much to, to take if you want to copy that one but I also saved up an update set so if you can click on that one and you hit raw then just right click save as save this one as an, an xml file then you can actually just go to your update sets oops and hit this one select it and upload it you will have it like this and just commit it and you will have that action as well let's take a look at the action unless you have seen episode 3 basically it requires four different inputs from the user when you create and use this uh, action the source table and of course the source sysid it will copy all attachment so it's a little bit better than out of the box ones uh, and of course where do you want to copy and the sysid of that record as well so nothing really fancy and as you can see i just used the glycis attachment and used the copy functionality to copy the attachments so we're going to use this one and I have created a flow called this one it's quite simple just a trigger schedule daily whenever you want to, to the flow to run this 5 p.m. I guess is fine then <coughs> first thing we do is we look up do we have any users that the start date is on today really good and then we need to fetch the notification or the record which holds the attachment in this case I hate to use it but I just take the sysid so I go into the notification table and say fetch me the record with this sysid and that will actually fetch this record this mean also means that I can delete this attachment and add a new one or add more and it will still work you don't need to change something in in the flow so I'll fetch this record then I'll loop through the records that are found here it might be one it might be a hundred or a zero so for each record I find in this lookup I want to send an email so I s selected that action and just to show you just click on that plus sign action and if I type send you'll fetch that one I say I want it to send to the user records email just by hitting this one the lookup records for each and I'll just dot walk and say it's the email I feel I want to act. put in the subject you want put in the different body and so on from here I can't sadly select attachment that would be a, a nice feature that would be possible next step in this loop is to use my copy attachments so from here I actually just selected the table from this record that I fetch here you can see you have them out here as well you can either just drag and drop them or use the cannonball to say notification table and whoops let me just remove that one got two of those and of course the notification sys ID then by some reason you notice when I click here I got the table as well but if I look at the send email 
the record that this one is creating in the outbox in the email, it doesn't have the table name here. So I actually have to specify that by hand. And then of course I just dot walk to the sysid and then we are done. Now let's do it the test run. I'll uh, don't need to save since I haven't really done any changes. Run test. Flow executed. Completed green. Click on this one. We can see that we have created an email. So let's take a look at the outgoing email. Here it is. Just to make sure that this is the one being created. So I'm not cheating. Let's do it like that. Yeah, still one. Click on that one and here you can see the mail is ready to be sent and we have the attachment with us as well. Quite simple uh, solution, just need the, the one custom action to get it to work in London. So let's take a look for Madrid. Basically the same setup, I have the same notifications. Uh, let's hit the flow designer. Now I don't use my own custom. Uh, action i use the out of the box one it works a little bit different so i'm going to show you what the difference is come on it's not that big process should never remove a tab i guess or close a tab when you have everything up and running there we go same trigger just some different time do the same look at on, on the user records. Now the difference is that the out of the box copy attachment action want you to point out which attachment is it that you want to copy. Yeah, you can't point at the record and say copy all attachments from that record. They want to know which attachment is it I should copy. So what I need to do is instead of uh, looking up let me hit this one here I look out whoops not that one uh, here we go here I look up the record that has the attachments in uh, Madrid I need to look up the attachment that I'm really looking at. so what I needed to do was to go to the sys attachment And actually find this is the file I uploaded or it's actually this one because this one is the one I sent. Right click, copy the sys ID, then go into the flow, say find the record in the sys attachment table which has this sys ID. Then we have the same loop, the same send email like in London. And then we have the copy attachment and the re different is we point out the attachment record I found here, found out which uh, record you want to copy to, it's this one just like we did in London and then which table it is. It will automatically fill in that one when you either drag and drop or cannonball it to the field as well. And then we're done. Testing this one. And let's take a look at the, the copy. Do I get the same? Get some strange errors here. I have no clue what it's actually complaining about, but uh, I guess that's a different story. Let's uh, take a look at the mails. And of course, if this doesn't work, I can always blame the blame the error message. So suicides. Here we go, and here is the attachment as well. So the big difference here is that if you used out of the box one, which is no code, if you decide you want to change the attachment, you actually need to go into the flow as the way I've configured it now, and change the suicide ID here of the attachment. As well, if you want to have multiple attachment, you need to look up multiple records and copy each one. One action per attachment. You can of course... Uh, hmm. You could do some kind of lookup 
loop here as well and then have another for each here and loop through all the attachments i guess instead of looking up the attachment we could probably fetch it somewhere else might be doable uh, I don't just haven't done it in this time now that I think of it I think we can get around and do this data driven as well Ooh, doo, doo, doo. but I'll leave it like this you have seen it how you can do it with no code or low code uh, can't show you everything guess you need to do something yourself if you get stuck, just uh, DM me on LinkedIn or, of course, whatever I, what I will say on LinkedIn is, of course, post it on the community and I'll take a look at it there. So post it on the community, of course, and people will help you out. Let me just go through. I think that was everything. Yep, yeah, that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching and see you around.